Ja, det er livnøjsligt. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, in this video, we're going to take a 2x4 or 4x2 and we're going to turn it into a three-legged stool. Sometimes referred to as the milking stool, but there's not too many people milking by hand anymore. Now, why are we doing this? Well, first reason, I need to make a little stool for my daughter. She needs a little stool for her playhouse. Number two, this is a great hand tool woodworking project and you need almost no tools to do this. So some really cheap tools, we're going to use some really cheap materials. Although having said that, at the time of making this video, it's nearly uh, cheaper to buy gold than it is to buy a 4x2 at the minute. But uh, that's just at the time of making this video. Ordinarily, this would be extremely cheap and you could make this from scrap wood or any, if you could even take wood from your firewood pile to throw one of these together. So they're really good fun to make. There's some good skills you can practice this and uh, like I said it's nice and easy and it's the kind of project that you don't have to be perfect on so if it looks like something the dog chewed when you're finished that's okay uh, three-legged stools will always sit on their three legs whether the legs are the same length or not that doesn't matter so it's a good project to start out with it's good fun to make you need very few tools and the materials we're going to use are extremely cheap and my daughter needs one that's why we're doing it now I have access to all these tools and this big workshop but it took me 20 years to put all this together so I realize most of you guys will not have a setup like this out there so what I'm going to try and do and I'm going to try and make this with the cheapest tools that I have in my workshop so we're going to try and keep it to a few hand tools we'll keep it super basic the kind of tools that everybody might have in their shed so without further ado let's just get on and make ourselves a little milking stool Okay, just before we get in and build this cool little stool, and it is a cool little stool, you're gonna enjoy this one, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video. And today's sponsor is Tradeify. Now, Tradeify is a complete job management platform. It is desktop based and also mobile based. So it works on iOS and Android. And it's aimed at all you tradespeople out there. So all you tradesmen and women, Plumbers, electricians, carpenters, painter, decorators, toilers, roofers, block layers. If you are self-employed and you're in the trades, then definitely check out Tradeify. It's all your administration in one place from everything from invoicing to quoting for jobs for scheduling jobs even if you have a small crew you can get them to all input their timesheets through it which makes it very very easy it's essentially your office in your pocket now one of the things i really like about using it and i've been working for myself for over 15 years as a self-applied electrician and i'm using tradeify and i find it has really streamlined everything i do one of the nice things you can do is when someone rings you about a job you can input all our details so you have a complete client base i can then go out and look at the job I can add all the details to the job in Tradeify. I can even take photographs and add them into Tradeify. So I can send that between me and my business partner and that we can see exactly what the job is all about. And we can go back and look at that in a year's time and we can still see all that information and we still have all the client's information there as well. And it also makes it very, very quick and easy to quote for that client and then to invoice for that client. So it keeps your cash flow going. So definitely check it out. I will link to it below. If you're in the trades, you don't want to miss this. And they've given me a promo code man in shed that will give you 50% off for your first three months and believe me guys it is pretty cheap anyway it's a price of a couple of coffee and a few sandwiches a month to, for all your administration in your one place and it is your office in your pocket so like I said I will link to that below and thanks again to Tradeify for sponsoring this video now on with the cool stool Okay, so this is what we're going to be using for this project. This is a three meter length or 10 foot length of four by two, two by four. It depends where you are in the world or it's 100 by 45. Again, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, this is what we're going to be using. So it's just a piece of construction lumbar. Now this is relatively not free, which is what we want. And we have good straight grain as well. That's also what we want. So try and pick out the best piece you can. And if you have a few scraps laying around, just look for some not free ones. We want to keep the knots out of the legs. It doesn't really matter in the top, although if we're not planing knots, that's uh, better again. So this one, like I said, is relatively not free. So we're going to use this. So let's just get on and make it. Okay, so let's start. Now, like I said, this is 4x2 or 2x4 or 100 by 45 and it's never quite that. So it's just under 100 millimeters or just under uh, 4 inches. So for my American friends watching this, if you're wondering about uh, metric measurements, 
uh, four inches is, is almost exactly 100 mil. So you can just think of an inch as a quarter of 100 mil or a quarter of 10 centimeters. So each one of these is 100 mil or 10 centimeters. You can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, four inches, 16 inches, uh, four inches, eight inches, 12 inches, 16 inches, excuse me. Now, we want our top to be roughly 300 millimeters uh, in diameter, which is about 12 inches. So three of these together is what we're gonna use. So you wanna cut three of these and glue them together. That's our very first job. So I'm just gonna cut them just over 300 millimeters uh, in length, and we should have just under 300 millimeters when I glue three of these together, and then we can mark that out for a circle. So that's our very first thing. Let's cut three of these, and we're gonna be using a nice cheap handsaw to do that. And uh, built into your nice cheap handsaw is an actual square. So you have this edge here is at 90 degrees to the back of the saw blade. So it's just a case of square that across there and cut three of these. Let's do that. Okay, I have my four by two clamped to the bench. We're just gonna chop the three of these. Now, I also have a big massive miter saw beside me, but for the sake of making this video, I'm gonna do this with as few tools as possible just to show you guys what you can do. So, so far we've used a pencil, a measuring tape, a clamp, and a handsaw. So uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, get some exercise and not use my miter saw. So we have our three pieces cut there. Now it's gonna make the top of the seat for our stool. It's gonna be roughly, like I said, 12 inches or 300 millimeters in diameter, a little bit less actually, but that's okay. So now what we do is we need to joint these, we need to glue them together. So it's another little skill to practice is to get some jointable edges so that we can glue the three of these together. We're gonna start planing this. So I wanna plane this edge. Now here's another little thing to look at, starting to learn to read, read grain. So we never want to play in against the grain. We always want to play with the grain grain because we don't want to be pulling up fibers. We want to be going across the top of the fibers and kind of pushing them down and uh, it'll give us a nice smooth finish. So you can see the grain on this piece is rising up this way. So I don't want to play in back against it because I'll be pulling up all those fibers and I'll get tear out. So we want to play in with that grain. So I'm going to turn my piece this way and we're going to play in this way. So. A nice little thing to get to do on this project is starting to learn to read the green. I just want to take a couple of strokes on this, get it plane down, and try and keep this as square to this face as I can. Okay, so after just a couple of strokes, I'm just going to check it and just make sure that I'm keeping relatively square to this face. Now, I haven't flattened this face, so it's only a rough guide. Again, we don't have to be super particular here. It's just a nice little skill to practice keeping this nice and flat and square to the face. So uh, that is pretty good. That's a pretty good edge. We should be able to join that. So now let's just get on and do the rest of them. Okay, there's our three pieces, nicely jointed together. So we joined both sides of our middle one and just the two uh, inside edges of our outside pieces and they are fitting together nicely. So again, just make sure you're nice and flat all the way along the length and that you're keeping square to one of the faces. So, uh, and it should go together nice and easy. And again, don't have to be super particular about this. It's just a nice little project to practice. Now, if your four by two happens to be round all over, see these rounded over corners, uh, some four by two would be sold as round all over it's called. Don't worry, just get a jointable edge, glue it all together, and then you can plane down both faces and we can take the gaps that those round overs will leave out of it later on. So let's just get this glued up and when that's gluing up, we can make the legs. Okay, let's get this glued together. Now I'm gonna be using these body clamps. I realize not everybody would have clamps like this, but just some nice handy quick clamps will do the job just as good or you could, make up a board, screw two pieces of timber to either side, sit these between the timber and just drive a wedge in either side. All you want is a small bit of force to keep these held together when the glue is setting. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say, but uh, I'm gonna use my body clamps because I have them. So a bit of wood glue on this. I'm using tight bond three here, just because I have it. So a nice zigzag pattern. We don't even have to spread this out too much. And another one on this side. Just like that, and that will do it. So 
Oops, rub them together, spread that glue out a small bit when you're putting the pieces together. Again, same here. And we can leave that set up, nice and simple. Okay, so next on to the legs, and while the seat is gluing up, we can get on and make these. Now, I've just cut two more pieces of the four by two, and I've cut these at 40 inches, or 350 mil, and now I just wanna split these straight down the middle. That'll give us four legs. We only need three, so we have one spare in case we mess up. So, uh, yeah, no problem. Just gonna saw this now, mark a line straight down the middle, and just saw these in half. So let's get on to that. Okay, we're set up in the voice. Now you could do this on a small saw horse if you had it or anything that you can set this up on just to chop it in half. Now I could take this to my bandsaw and cut it out in seconds, but uh, I'm gonna stay true to the video and we're gonna do it all by hand. We well, don't have to be super particular here. Just keep as uh, close to the center as you can. It doesn't have to be straight because I'm gonna be carving these legs now in a second. There we go, so it just came out of from both sides. Doesn't take that long really. And that's gonna be two blanks for two legs. Okay, so here's the top part of our leg. Now, this is gonna be the auger bit that I'm gonna be drilling out for the hole for our legs to sit into our seat with. This is a 25 mil or one inch auger. So I've just used that auger to mark the leg so I can see what I need to cut this down to. Now I'm keeping to this corner here. So all this material will be removed. So you keep to one corner and then we're gonna mark the other side, which is gonna be slightly wider. I shall show you that now. Just flip that guy around. Now make sure you remember what corner you're keeping it. So it's this one here. So I follow that one all the way up, flip it over. Just stand that back in the voice, make it easier to see. Now this end, I'm going to keep to 32 millimeters. So I've just got a 32 mil force in a bit. That's just over an inch and a quarter. And I've marked that. Now I can see what I need to work down to. Now I have a lathe. I could turn this in seconds on a lathe, but we're going to do this by hand. So let's start hocking off some material. We'll mark all three of them the very same way and we start uh, shaping these legs. Okay guys, I'm busy shaping the legs. Now I made one slight change. I've moved my hole from the edge where I marked it originally here into the center, just because these pieces are actually a little bit uh, on a thin side. So if you had a big thick piece of wood and you want to try and get a, um, like a cylinder shape out of it, if you stay out to the edges, it means you don't have as much material to remove from two edges. You can just do all the work on this side and it's easy to split it off. But uh, I'm very close to the edge here, so I've decided to move it back into the center. So I've just remarked my 20 mil hole and my 32 mil hole to the center. Now I'm just caught here on my bench between my dogs. And this for all the world is gonna act as my lathe. So nice, cheap Stanley chisel. These things are literally a couple of euros. Um, put a nice sharp edge on them and we can just hog off some material. So I'm just working down my edge to my center, to my uh, 25 millimeter mark, I should say. So the inch mark, that's gonna go into the bottom of my seat. So we're just gonna work that all the way around until we get down there. And uh, like I say, it's nice and quick and easy to get this material off with the chisel. And then what we can do is we can shape everything and taper everything down then with the hand plane, just like that. And it's gonna have a nice handmade kind of multifaceted feel to it. It's not gonna be a perfect cylinder. Um, so yeah, it'll have a nice handmade look. There's not much more to it than this. I'll get you in for a close up and we'll crack on. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see where we are there. So you can see I've moved into the center. This was the hole that was out to the edge. So I've just remarked it again in the center. I'll be cutting off the top of this. So I'm not worried about the screw that's left that little small hole in the top. I have enough to protrude through the top of the seat and we'll be chopping this off. So we're just gonna walk back to this uh, 25 mil circle or one inch circle here. And it's only a case of uh, just keep rotating this guy around between the two dogs and uh, keep pulling off that material. Just lock that in there just like that. And like I said, you can really uh, take off a lot of material with the chisel. Work bevel down, because if you go bevel up, uh, the chisel can really bite into the wood and you can risk actually splitting it off. So if you work bevel down with a good sharp chisel, you'll be amazed at how quickly you can actually take this down. We just want to be careful when we're coming close to the edge. We don't want to go to this line, we want to leave it slightly wider than this line, and then we're going to work it down uh, when we're fitting it. 
into the hole that we're going to drill out for it. So like I said, it's just a case of work this down with the chisel, just like this. Not much more to it. I'm going to crack on and then when I'm halfway through this, we'll jump back in. Okay guys, here we are down the other end. Now this is the 32mm and I'm just getting this down to shape and then we can join up both ends, whatever design we choose, so we can have it kind of wider in the middle or we can have a taper from one end to the other. It's up to you guys, whatever you think looks best, you can do. But just a humble Stanley number four. This is one I bought on eBay for about 10 euros and just did it up with a sharp blade in it and a hey presto. So again, woodworking doesn't have to be expensive. And I'm just taking this guy down with the number four, just working back to that circle. And again, this does not have to be perfect. We're not trying to create a perfect circle. If I wanted a perfect circle, I could go to the lathe and do it. I want a nice handmade feel. We want to build this with as few tools as possible and uh, really kind of enjoy the process. So that's it, that's kind of that end almost done now. I'm around to my circle there now. So let's look at the other end. This is where we have to start fitting our piece. Okay, so now that I have the leg roughly shaped, and again, it is only roughly shaped at this stage, so I'm kind of at my 32 mil here and I'm at my 25 mil here. I wanna start fitting this to the seat. Now, obviously, I don't wanna keep shoving this in and out of the seat because you could end up reaming out the hole, widening it out, and then you don't get a good fit. So, here's just another piece of four by two. I've drilled the 25 mil hole with the auger bit straight through this. This is the same thickness that my seat is going to be, roughly thereabouts. So I can take this now, put it into that hole, and just kind of work it nice and easy just like that now i can see exactly i have a shelf all the way around here or a shoulder i should say and i can work to that shoulder and keep working that back now until that protrudes through this side so i want to come out just enough so i can chop off the end of this and clean off where i drilled with the auger so nice and simple i'm just going to hold it here on top of this uh, four by two i'm just working it with the chisel Again, i'm just working this piece down to that shoulder line each time and taking care not to dig into anything past that shoulder line. Okay guys, there we go. Just like that, take it down with the chisel, down to the depth that I need, so it's just over 50 mil. It's enough for it to protrude through the four by two. It's good and solid all the way through, so just a piece protruding, I'll flush trim that off in the actual seat part and that'll give us a nice um, finish. Now, we also have to put a wedge and split the end of that to make it stick in, but we'll get to that. Now, what I've done is I've just put a pencil line around that shoulder here, so I'm not to take any more material past that pencil line. In fact, I wanna keep that pencil line intact, and I wanna taper now away from that pencil line. So we've a decision to make now, and it's perfectly up to you guys, whatever you wanna do. You can taper from there straight to the leg, or you can leave it slightly thicker in the middle and uh, taper both ends. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna taper to roughly the middle. Again, it's just eyeball this and uh, it'll be done by feel. So it's the exact same process. It's just chiseling and hand plane. I get this done and then I'm gonna show you an even quicker way to do this by hand. Right, so we have two legs made and one to go. Now, they don't have to be exact. Again, they're not supposed to be carbon copies of each other. These are supposed to look handmade. So these are more or less ready to go. Now, there's several ways you could do this. Like I said, I've done it with a chisel and a plane. You could do it with a draw knife. You could do it with a larger knife. You could do it with uh, spoke shaves. Whatever you have, it's nice and simple. You're making handmade furniture, so it should look handmade. Now, there's another tool that I love to use, and uh, regular viewers of my channel will know that this is one of my favorite tools. This is the Japanese saw rasp. Now, it has a coarse side and a fine side, and I've made many guitar necks with this, axe handles and loads of handles for different things with this and it removes material in a hurry so when it comes to shaping things like legs and stuff it is very easy to use but you've got to be careful because you can with one stroke really eat into the timber uh, so when you're getting down to your final dimension just take it nice and handy the nice thing about this is it has a nice flat area on it so you can actually go in at 90 degrees and cut straight in, saw straight in with this at 90 degrees and get a nice straight perpendicular edge. So uh, yeah, really nice tool all together. So I'm just gonna get on now, a bit of el more elbow grease and get this thing shaped. <laughs> Okay guys, 
So there we go, all three legs are done now, more or less. It's a small little bit of finishing to do on them, but not much. So uh, they're not all exactly the same, um, they're near enough, close enough, they don't have to be exactly the same. That's the fun thing about this project, is that uh, we're not looking for perfection here. We're looking for a handmade feel, looking to have some fun, using some basic tools and developing some skills. That's all we're trying to do. So uh, yeah, it has kind of multifaceted face on it. So you can see that a hand plane or a chisel or a bladed instrument was used. And I want to kind of keep that look because I think it's quite a nice look. It looks that kind of whittled handmade thing. And all we've used so far is a hand plane, a chisel, a saw rasp and a saw. That's basically it. So now let's get on and address the seat. Okay guys, so this is the underside of our seat. Now, it's the underside because the other side looks better and we use that for the top, so the worst looking side is going to be the underside and this is the side we're going to mark. So the very first thing we want to do is find the center of this and we don't have to measure anything, we can just go uh, corner to corner here. We don't have to go all the way across either, we can just mark where we intersect in the center. So there we go, just like that. Okay, that's our center right there. Now, we want to draw our circle and my width is about 285 mil. So I'm about 11 inches. So I'm going to take it back to 280. That is nearly exactly 11 inches, I think, if I'm not too much mistaken. We're slightly longer this way. So in order to get our circle, that's what we do. So there's a nice and easy way of doing this. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this trick before. I'm just going to put a small screw. Right in the center, again, this is the underside of our seat, so it doesn't matter. And what did I say, 280. So half of 280 is 140. So I'm gonna drop my measuring tape back into 140, just like that. Hook that on there and catch this guy. And if my pencil is sharp enough, again, just keep tension on the end of the tape. And uh, my pencil is not actually cooperating, but there you go. That's how we do that. Now, I want to come in two inches and draw another circle or 50 millimeters. So all I got to do is drop that back 50 mil. So I'm at 240, that will take me to 90 millimeters. Exactly, catch my pencil there again. There we go, that's good enough. Okay, we have our two circles marked out now, and that measuring tape trick is quite handy if you do it right. Uh, I didn't really do it right, but trust me, it does work, and you do get a nice neat circle if you bother to sharpen your pencil before you try and make the video, but I didn't. Anyway, let's crack on. So, I've just drawn a line straight into my circle, so I've only squared it off this edge. It just has to be a straight line from the center out. I don't, doesn't matter where you draw it. This is just a reference point. This is so we can lay out three even legs. So one leg is going to be right there where that line intersects. So I've set my dividers up. You can actually do this with the measuring tape as well. I've set my dividers up that radius, which is 90 millimeters. So now I'm going to put it right where I intersect that outside circle. Step around, that's one point. Step around there, that's two points. Now this should give me six even points. So that's two, three, four, five, and six back to the start again. So I need to skip two of those. All I want is three. So go one and two. So right there. That's where one leg is going to go. And then if I go one and two again, which is right there. Now there's one leg is right here. I'm going to drill. One leg is right here. And one leg is right here. And that's three perfectly spaced in a circle legs. Nice and simple. Okay, so next thing we want to do is set up our angle for drilling out our legs. Now I'm going to drill out the legs at this stage because I have a nice square flat um, slab to work with before I go cutting out this and then drilling out the legs. It's just easier to work with this as it is. So we drill the legs out now. So I've just, from where I've marked my legs, I've just drawn a line straight into the center. We're going to use that as a sight line so that we can keep the auger bit perfectly lined up with that. So we're lined up with the center of our circle all the way and now we want to set a splay on our legs so we don't want the legs sticking out at 90 degrees we want them off at an angle to add stability so i'm roughly going to go at about 78 degrees so i've set my protractor at 78 degrees i've just eyeballed my um 
sliding bevel off my protractor and that's what I'm going to use for my drill. So what I'm going to do now is set up my protractor right along my sight line and then I'm going to take my auger bit and I'm going to make sure that I'm running parallel with my sliding bevel. Okay, so I'm going to drill this out with a bit and brace. I'm going to do it by hand. You could do it with a drill just like this. Just take your time. So again, I'm using uh, my sliding bevel as my sight line so that I'm straight towards my center. So I can see it from here looking in this way that I'm good in center. And then I'm just checking every now and again that I'm keeping the bit perfectly parallel to the sliding bevel. So we're just eyeballing this. Uh, it doesn't, again, have to be... Try and be as accurate as you can at this stage. It, doesn't have to be 100% spot on. A three-legged stool will always sit on three legs, even if they're not the right angle, and if they're not the same length. So we've plenty of wiggle room here, but we want to be accurate, uh, try and be accurate as you can at this stage. And we also want to just check uh, when we're coming to the other side that when that screw just breaks out, um, we want to make sure that we drill in from the other side so that we're not going to break out through the top of our stool. So we just wind that back. Okay, the screw is just through. Again, just try and match that angle back in the way. So I'm gonna line up my screw hole. Try and stay dead center. Now, you will notice that I went in at the wrong angle that way, but it's actually not gonna make any difference. I was just at the surface here, and I was just lining up those holes. So, little mistake made on my behalf. It was, I'm angling out the way. I angled back in towards the center, but uh, the hole is actually good. I'll give you a look at it now. Okay, there's the hole in our piece. As you can see, I was almost all the way through, so even the fact that I was going in at a slightly wrong angle, it hasn't made any difference whatsoever. So yeah, just be careful of that. I almost messed up. So I'm angling in this way, which means I'm angling out the other way when I flip it over. So yeah, I just gotta be careful of that. Okay, we've three more, two more to drill. I'll get on and drill those and then we'll jump back in. Okay, so it is the next day. Now it's always a good idea to stop working when you get tired. That way you don't make too many mistakes because when you do get tired, you do start to make mistakes. But uh, luckily we didn't do anything that we couldn't recover from. Now, we have our seat here ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is cut out our circle. Now we could use a bandsaw, you could use a jigsaw. I'm not gonna use any power tools just to keep this as simple as possible. So we'll cut this with the handsaw. Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna start cutting this down to size. So I'm just gonna remove most of the material with the hand saw. So I'm gonna start by taking off the corners and then we we'll take off the other corners that we create. So we've got four corners. When we're done, we'll have eight corners and so on and so forth. And we'll keep knocking them down until we get uh, nice and easy to finish it off with either the saw rasp or a spoke shave or a chisel or a plane. I have my blank now in the voice and I've just kept cutting at it until I knock it down to an almost circle. So you just keep knocking off those corners as you go and you will get most of the material off it. You won't get all of it off it, but you get most of it off it. Now, we have a couple options to go from here. We can start taking this down with a chisel. If you do that, however, just pay attention to the grain. See where you can pull up pieces like this. So you want to always work with the grain so that you're not lifting off and breaking off big chunks especially when you get down around the end grain. So these boards are running this way. So we have end grain here and end grain here. It's gonna get quite tough. So we don't, we don't want to be working up against the grain or we just split the timber. We always wanna be going down with the grain and working it off. So that's one option, you go with that. Again, spoke shaves here will work well. You could get some of this down with a hand plane. Absolutely, you could work around this. Number four, nice and easy. Again, takes a bit of time. So what I'm gonna do is use the Japanese saw rasp. Again, when it comes to shape and stuff, these are fantastic and they are super cheap. So Japanese Shinto rasp, look out for them. So, and I don't have to really worry now about grain direction with this. I can just start hogging off material and working to my line all the way around. Okay, 
guys, so my spoke shaves have just arrived, believe it or not, in the middle of filming this. So these are the Quang Shang uh, spoke shaves. I got these from Workshop Heaven and they've just arrived in the post. Now, they're doing an absolutely fantastic job and it's probably the best way to do this um, if you have a set of spoke shaves. Now again, with using the spoke shave, you have to worry about grain direction. So if I'm moving this way, I'm going against the grain now and I'm getting lots of tear out. So now I need to work my way back down this way. And you get a nice, cleaned finish. And you see I'm going against the grain here again, so you gotta be careful. Obviously the grain is changing direction right at this point. So we can just work that back down, that bit of tear out. And then we wanna come at this side from this direction. So there we go, there's our circle roughly roughed out. It's not too bad. Again, you're not aiming for perfection here. This is, you want that handmade feel, so don't beat yourself up on it if this doesn't turn out to be a perfect circle. It's all practice and it's a good bit of fun and you're using hand tools and that's all that matters. Now, what I've done is I've just draw, roughly scribed the line about a centimeter in from the edge. This looks like a big wheel now at the minute, so we want to soften it up. We want to take down the edges just to make it look a little bit thinner without actually losing any of the thickness. So again, just a centimeter in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull a line about a third of the thickness in and we're just going to draw a line the whole way around this. So we'll scribe that around and we'll do the same on the other side and then we'll work from this line to this line and from this line to this line. Again, we'll do that with the spoke shave and the saw rasp and then we'll hit this with the sander. Now I'm not hand sanding this. It is unbelievably hot today and uh, yeah, one thing I'm not doing is hand sanding. But so uh, I'll machine sand it. So I'll just stick the same thing again. Again, we're just roughing this in. Roughly a third of the way in. Just like that. Okay, so with the spoke shave then, I'm just working those two lines together. Just like that. And again, it's just to soften up the edges and it'll be nicer to sit on as well. So we just want to keep a kind of an even circle the whole way around on the top and on the bottom and just work those two lines together. That's it, there's not much more to it than that. And like I said, it is grain dependent doing this. So uh, I want to make sure I'm always going with the grain. You'll know straight away if you're not, you'll start to get lots of tear out. And uh, yeah, just walk back in the opposite direction. That's all you have to do, no big deal. So we work that both sides. And you can see that'll really soften up this, make it look a little bit narrower. And it'll be comfortable to sit on as well. We won't be sitting on a hard edge. So I'll get on and do this now. And then when it's done, we'll jump back in. So having worked everything down with the spoke shave, both sides and the saw rasp, you can see we have a lovely round over edges each side. And again, we're not looking for perfection here. We're just trying to maintain that nice handmade feel. So if it's not perfect all around, don't panic. That's the whole point. I'm trying to drill home for this whole project. Uh, just get it made, get practicing. And if it looks handmade, that's exactly what you want. Now, so that's it. I've just taken this to the orbital sander. That's the only machine I'm going to use today. Like I said, I'm not hand sanding. So we took this to 180 grit and just sanded it all over. Gave the legs a light touch also. Now, I've just taken down the shoulder line of the leg as well. Remember, we had this stark shoulder line. So just with the chisel, I've worked that in. And the reason for doing that is if I set this into the base of my seat, just like that, you can see it sits in there kind of seamlessly around now. We don't have a stark shoulder. And um, because we're at an angle, you would see one side of the shoulder more than the other. But now it's just a kind of a taper the whole way in. So it disappears inside the hole and just looks nice. And uh, like it grew there for all the world. So now we've got to fit these legs. So let's get on and do that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do with our legs is split our tenon straight down the middle for driving in our wedge. So we just got to saw straight down through the middle of this leg now. And uh, there's not much to it. Now I'm going to be using a kind of a good little rip saw here, but uh, you guys, any kind of small little tenon saw will do it. You can pick up pretty cheap. And again, we just want to cut straight down through the middle. Just 
like that. And I'm gonna to go to full depth of this saw, cut all three of them just like that. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is cut some hardwood wedges. Now, I just have a little strip of walnut here that's out of my off-cut bin. This will do absolutely perfect. The most important thing you wanna make sure is that the tenon, or the wedge, sorry, fits inside in that hole perfectly. And this is 25 millimeters in thickness, or one inch in thickness. And you wanna make sure that when you're hammering that down, it goes completely inside in the hole. You don't want it to be wider than the hole when it comes to fitting the legs, or you're gonna run into problems. So, let's cut a couple of wedges off this, nice and easy. There's one wedge, and then if we cut straight in this way, that's two wedges. Just like that. Do the same again, and we have three and four wedges. Okay guys, so we have all our wedges cut. Now, this is the important part when we're fitting our leg. So I have this leg in just to show you. So we can see we have our split, it's running up and down. So you can see my grain is running left to right here. I wanna make sure that I keep my wedge perpendicular to the grain. If I was to put it in with the grain, I'm putting pressure this way, so I risk splitting this timber. So I wanna make sure that I'm perpendicular to the grain and that my spreading force is across this way where the timber is strongest and I'm perpendicular to those wood fibers, if that makes sense. Like I said, if we drive it in this way, we risk splitting this apart and undoing all our good work. So we'll orientate all three legs with the uh, wedges that way. So let's go on and do it. Okay, let's get these legs glued in and uh, make sure we orientate everything in the right direction. And uh, I have these numbered to the corresponding holes. So it's gonna be just a little bit of case of get some glue around these tenons. We don't need a whole lot. Again, I'm just using type on tree because that's what I have to hand. But any wood glue really here would do. Get a nice bit on that. That goes in hole number two, just like that. And again, I wanna make sure that I'm orientating these legs correctly. Just like that, keep them all the same. Okay, there we go, let's get our wedges in. Okay, a bit of glue on the wedges, not much to this. We have everything orientated the way we should have. And then it's just a case of hammer these guys in. Okay, so there are three wedges in place, orientated in the right direction, so we let the glue set up for a couple of hours, and then we'll flush trim off these and give it a final sand and get some finish on it. That'll do the finest. Hi right, guys, there we go. One three-legged stool slash milking stool, and I have to say, I really enjoyed that. Now, is it perfect? No. Does it need to be perfect? Absolutely not. Again, the whole point of this video is to demonstrate that you can make great little things like this with a couple of hand tools and something to work on. Some sort of bench, some sort of voice. That's all you need. You don't need all these tools to get started. You don't need a big workshop like this. Now, I know how lucky I am to have all this stuff, but I wanted to make a video again for guys who are just getting started into woodworking and just to inspire some people to start making. You don't need all this a few hand tools, that's what I started out with in a little garden shed and now I've ended up with this. So it is possible. And like I say, if you can build one of these, then you can build a bar stool. And if you can build a bar stool, then you're well on your way to building the bar. So that's it guys. I, like I said, hopefully you've enjoyed that one and hopefully it inspires you guys to get out making. So um, if you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out a lot. Comments and questions below. Get in the conversation down in the comment section. I always try to get back to everybody if I can. 
can. Thanks as always to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. It is very much appreciated, guys. And uh, links to everything as always will be below. Now I'm off to give this to my daughter. This is going into our playhouse, her own little milking slash three-legged stool. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.